Hello friends, it is I, Self-Critical Automaton, and it is Wednesday, my dudes, as the quote goes. Which means it's time for me to stream in the videoed games. Today I'm going to be playing some of this because I'm doing whatever the fuck I want this week. I finished Dark Souls, that means I just get to play whatever. Although, of course, next week it will be time to dive into... I forgot they added a whole bunch of irritating conversations to this game. Alright, I've decided. Tomorrow I'm setting up my secondary screen. It can be removed from its current position as non-functional TV, since the Xbox broke and we can't watch TV on the TV anymore. It can come back on my desk and resume its original task as... Well, I mean, its original original task was to be a TV, but yeah. Uh, and then I can actually do this properly instead of using my garbage phone as a weird makeshift solution. So, uh, a new update came out for this a few weeks ago, and... Uh, Maybe even more recently than that. And uh, they've updated the, the narrative with chapter two. They've also, uh, they've not added any added in any new ships, but I think they've changed the, the varieties a bit more and they completely reset everyone's progress again, which is unfortunately what happens occasionally if you choose to play an early access game. One of the things they've added is the second chapter of the narrative, which sucks. It's terrible. It sucks ass and I hate it. Oh, yeah, you see, the thing is, last time I streamed Shipbreaker was last time they did an update that reset everybody's progress. Um, I was going to stream the update this time, but I was like, hmm. Oh, yeah, also, you guys will need to tell me if it's, like, juddery and unviewable. I don't know if they've changed any of the, you know, mechanisms by which the, the visuals make it be difficult for my processor. It should be fine, because it was fine before, but you never know. But yeah, so considering the last time I streamed right after an update, they reset everyone's progress. I decided not to do that this time, which is why it's been a couple of weeks. I haven't played it very much, but I've got enough to get a few upgrades and the, the one unlockable tool. Which means I can play a bit more efficiently. Which is what we all really want in life. To play the video games at maximum efficiency. Style, panache. What are these things? I'm a machine and care only for maximum efficiently. Uh, oops. I hope that doesn't go anywhere important. <laughs> Well, nothing else exploded, so it's probably fine. I love to be careless with heavy demolitions machinery. So, on this current reset playthrough, I've uh, unlocked some of the hazards. In fact, I think I've unlocked all of the hazards now. And uh, that was incredibly risky, the thing I just did, because if this airlock was pressurized, this gigantic hunk of metal would have... Uh, exploded out towards my face directly. Anyway, the main thing they've added is this this narrative thing, which I, I kind of hate and think is terrible. Um, it's supposed to be this kind of, you know, folksy people against the man. We're just we're just working stiffs, trying to trying to make our make our way day to day. Kind of vibe, but doing that rather than having the sort of satirical sharp-edged thing where it's all told through very little bits of information and, and peripheral storytelling I think worked a lot better. Hi Weed Gamer 69 420 XX 420. It's always nice to see you show up. And uh, oh, what the fuck was I saying? Uh, yeah so originally the story was kind of implicit and told just through peripheral stuff, scraps and notes and sarcastic little loading screen details that would let you know just exactly how much of a cog in this horrible future machine that owns your life you are. But now there's a bunch of characters and they're all, they've all got hopes and dreams and they're kind of put upon and they're not funny. And um, 
That was irritating, especially considering they introduced the worst thing you can do in video games, which is to have unskippable voiced interactions uh, with no interesting visual to look at and nothing else you can particularly do. So you just have to sit in your habitat and listen while some irritating co-workers mumble interminably about how terrible their job is. And that's just less interesting. Like, tell me how terrible the future, you know, corporate job situation is in a passive way while I do the fun thing, which is playing the game. Don't make me sit there and listen. That's just bad. Um, I don't, like, I don't hate narrative in games at all. I love narrative in games, but I do hate having to sit and do nothing while people talk in really boring and badly written ways. Which brings me to the other bad side of this. Namely, they've added a, uh, you know, like a corporate foreman type character. So originally there was this plot about unionization and the the company's, you know, attempts to, to thwart unionization attempts. What the f Oh, that's right. There's an upper section of the ring, because there always is, and I always forget. Um, which, fair enough, you know, that's pretty, um, pretty timely. You could do some interesting satirical work with, you know, space unionization in this, the age of unionization becoming completely vital for people to survive day to day. Because, you know, it's, <laughs> it's the 20s, and apparently every time there's a the 20s, this happens. Oh, I'm out of bombs. It's the main way you can tell, you know, time travellers, I think, can probably set their infinity space clocks by how much of an issue workers' rights are. Um, anyway, so, like, fair enough, that's a good thing for, that's a good narrative to have, and you can do a lot with it, and it works well. But, um, they've introduced this guy who's, like, just an ineffective, shitty middle manager who's one step above you. Um and is introducing all of these shitty corporate targets that you can't possibly reach and stuff. And it kind of reframes the problem as like, rather than being the fact that you have to do this job that literally owns your life at all is the problem, it completely reframes it as being, oh, this one guy is a dick and that's why this job sucks. This one guy is giving you unreasonable job targets and trying to control your life or whatever. And there's this sort of implication that like, you know, it's not even part of, company policy or whatever it's not even it's not even that he's being encouraged to do that he's just doing it because that's how middle managers are and that is how middle managers are sure but also i thought this game was going to be critiquing you know the uh the structures that exist and how they're all eating us alive rather than i don't know it, it reduces it to an individual personal problem you know, it becomes a kind of a feel-good story of one workplace unionizing to get rid of their one shitty boss rather than rather than of the workers themselves rising up to escape the awfulness of the system that they exist in. Anyway, that's enough proletarian ranting for now. Because one thing I really appreciate is that they have upgraded the physics engine. Because that's what we really care about when we play video games. Themes? No, no. Narrative? Not particularly. But do the guns go bang good? Does it feel nice? Does it feel nice when the man fall down? That's the important thing about a video game. And I've got to say, there's a lot of really subtle improvements and they are really nice. <laughs> it feels extremely good to float around through these spaces. I think there's just like a slightly subtly higher degree of detail in the, you know, the, I can't remember the words. That's not good. I've forgotten what the words for how the shapes of things are in um, 3D simulations. What the fuck are they even called? Um, like the, the modeling or the normal mapping or whatever the fuck it is. These feel more like 3D physical objects than they used to. They felt like you know, mid-90s polygons previously. None of those are exactly the word I'm looking for, but they'll do for now. They're close enough. Anyway, it just feels much more like physical objects moving around one another realistically now than it did before. And it's a lot smoother while you do that. All of which is fantastic. 
I've also changed a lot of the slightly frustrating things about the ways things were bolted together. Uh, several several components that were previously impossible to cut apart in, in easy ways have now been given nice convenient cutting points. Which I actually think is a downside. One of the one of the appealing things about this game is after you do lots and lots of the basic stuff, having to figure out how to solve more complex problems in your own way. And um, how to, for example, break apart the shell of a gecko, which is the, the third spaceship type. Which I haven't unlocked on this uh, reset account yet, but will sooner or later. Um, you know, how do you, how do you break that apart into manageable sections to throw them in the bin? Bong. I think it would be... Actually, it, the soundscape of this game is pretty good, but if you had a sort of a vague distant thumping and banging, echoing like a gong as, as bits of metal smash into one another, I think that would be a big improvement. And um, supposedly the reason you can't is because you're in vacuum, but that's not true. This, this, this space clearly is not vacuum because... Um, we don't have free inertia. If you if you scoot something off in a certain direction, it slows down and stops eventually. So there must be at least some partial atmosphere up here. And therefore, I don't see why you couldn't have distant, like, gloom, bang, booms happening. Another cool thing they've added is that you can modify your habitat a little bit, but um, very, 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 very slightly. In fact, the thinner the atmosphere, the worse the, the sound can travel. Um, but if there is an atmosphere at all, then some sound can travel, so... You know, it's not exactly realistic to begin with. So why not just have these atmospheric sounds, you know? There's, a, there's huge sound libraries of atmospheric space sound effects of, you know, giant sheets of armor plating bumping into one another very far away, distant bangs and booms, you know? And using those distant sound effects for sounds that are happening very close by to you, I think would work quite well for feeling like you're in a very, very thin atmosphere. Yeah, actually, you can physically touch you can use your gloves to pull yourself around if you run out of fuel or if you need to move precisely. You can also use this to grab objects and reposition them without having to use your grapple, which can be quite useful. Um, so if you can do that, then you should be able to hear stuff from, you know, inside when you're doing that sort of thing. And I also, yeah, I agree that picking up radio signals would be a good idea. When you, um... There is music in the game. I've got it switched off at the moment because I got really bored of it, and um, I like to put my own music on when I'm listening. There's a there's a there's a voice line somewhere about how um, you know the corporation has carefully designed your suit to scan your brain and pick the kind of music that most that's most appropriate to you that makes you work most efficiently, which is is noodly space guitar in this game particularly, but it's only one soundtrack. Which is ridiculous because, as we all know, the piece of the, the style of music that makes me work most efficiently is like ambient breakbeat techno. Cannot get enough of that stuff. And um, hmm, I do think yeah. So if you smash your head on something real hard, one of the various effects that can occur. This, is there a door on this? How am I supposed to get in there? Oh, do I have to go in through this way? Uh, yeah, so when that happens, you get you get someone else's radio signal for a bit until you, you know, thump on your head for a while to make it. Ooh, interesting. This is a new layout. I have not seen... I have not seen a javelin with this, this interior layout previously. That's awkward. Can I fit through here? Yeah, just about. Hmm, okay. This is... this is an interesting puzzle. How can I get this generator out without causing too much trouble? I'll pop the end off of this one first. But yeah, so given that's the case, if you could pick up other radio signals, that would be that would be pretty cool. If, in fact, even if there was just, I would not hate having the like other characters be around and available to hear. If it was just ambient stuff during, 
during a, a a session, you know, while you're while you're working a shift. If someone else just sent a message and rambled about their day, and you just nod in your response silently as you're listening from across over here, or just hit, overhear other people's conversations, even might be easier. Might be easier if I yank this horizontally first rather than removing the shell cowling on the outside. I think that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, exactly. You could you could have them be like, mind if I vent while I vent? And then they breach an airlock or something. Or even if just they're just having conversations about their day and their lives and all the, all the passive, horrible shit they go through in space. Oh, okay, I really timed this badly, huh? Let's just snip this here, scoot back along the top real quick. Oh god, I'm stuck. This is bad. There we go. All right. Well, I've learned my lesson. I won't be. I won't be leaving the external cowling on next time. Is it stuck? Please don't be stuck. How about you hurry the fuck up and don't explode? Get the fuck out here. There we go. Like a glove. If it doesn't go in there, I'm going to be really disappointed. There we go. Fantastic. Most valuable component secured. Let's get rid of those. Oh. Nice, tidy profit today. Oh, that reminds me. I might not uh, do a full stream today. I may or I may not, depending on how I feel. I've been feeling really sick all day and had quite a bad sore throat. So if that starts hurting again, I will be morning, I will be Cutter dipping immediately. So I love games that give you some kind of upgradable apartment or customizable apartment. Those are so delightful and I love them very much. However, uh, they've implemented it in my least favorite way in this, which is that you can't move around freely. And the only thing you can customize are a few, are a few pre-designed posters. You can just pick which posters appear on these spots. Which I honestly like less than just having a game menu. <laughs> Um, I find it really disappointing, all things considered. My favourite, of course, are the ones that give you a 3D space with physics simulation and let you move around it freely. I just absolutely love that. Like, Lord knows, I've spent longer playing uh, Elder Scrolls games making my house be nice than I have actually playing those games. I, you know, modding Morrowind to add customizable furniture and Skyrim to have you know, custom buildable houses, all of that kind of silly nonsense that I absolutely love. Or even just... Yeah, like, honestly, even if you couldn't freely move around it and you couldn't customize it in any other way than just selecting from pre-selected things on pre-selected spots, even if you could just change, like, your bedside lamp or the cover of your bed or whatever, you know, if you just had a few other things that you could change. This feels like the fastest, dirtiest way to implement it by just re recontextualizing and reusing assets that you already had, and then they also don't let you freely do that. Of course, the greatest, the greatest um, modifiable home of all time in video games was in late lamented um, MMORPG uh, Wildstar, which I loved. I loved that game so much. It's um, it's probably the MMO I've had the best time playing out of every MMO I've ever played, and I've played quite a few. But the real uh, the real star of it was that you could just essentially it put you in a in a mini level editor. You could freely place, rotate, redesign however you liked, basically everything. Um, you couldn't change the ult the outside and interior shape of your house, but it would just be presented to you as an empty space. You could put floors down, you could freely, you know, upscale, downscale, re reposition in 3D space, any single item and tons of structural details 
and just build whatever the fuck you like. It was so good. It was incredibly good. And it's dead. It's dead and it'll never come back and I miss it. In fact, that was one of the one of the things my partner and I used to do together. Um, for like six months or something, our, our hobby that we did together was that we played. Played Wildstar. Oh, it was good. It was really, really good and it deserves to still be around. If I remember correctly, it was made by a bunch of people who had worked on World of Warcraft, who... I mean, escaped is the wrong word, but let's go with escaped. <laughs> From um, the vicissitudes of Blizzard and went off to found their own MMO. And essentially took all of the design expertise that was uh, developed over the course of, like, ten years- well, no, this would have been- over the like, course of like six or seven years of World of Warcraft going from the original World of Warcraft to what it became with with its various expansions, which was a very different game ultimately. Is that actually moving? It's not. Is that still bolted on somewhere? Ah, yeah, this thing's got it attached. It's just a walkway, I think. This is interesting because this is this engine chamber is much more similar to the engine chamber on Geckos, which we, we don't have access to at the moment, but which I definitely would like to start chopping up sooner rather than later, not least because they're very valuable. Did the tethers break? My tethers broke. Uh, the same shit from before what? Oh, <laughs> uh, this is this is the ship I was on earlier in this session. You can uh, take as long as you like to chop up a ship. Generally speaking, I like to try and get them done as fast as possible because um, basically the way uh, the way it works is that you you have your fees day to day. You know, you pay you have to pay the company for the right to work because this is, as I said a uh, satire on, on horrible space capitalism and uh, so it's, it costs you like 500,000 a day just to be working so generally speaking if you're not making a few million in profit a day then you're in trouble hmm is that gonna is that enough that's probably yeah no the mass of this one's much bigger so that should work fine actually I could just send that straight into the bin I don't need to don't need to fuck about. It's not one ship per shift. You pick a ship off of a roster of randomly generated sh uh, well. Procedurally generated ships, I guess. Um, there's three ship classes. The Mackerel, the Javelin, which is this type, and the Gecko, which I don't haven't regained access to yet. And then um, it's up to you how long you take to deconstruct it. Each shift is 15 minutes and costs you however much the fuck it was that I said it costs you. Um, well, actually, it probably costs you quite quite a different value, actually. But it costs you an amount of money to be working. And then, uh, yeah, so... This is the one I was on the previous shift. I think uh, with a few more upgrades, I'm able to take care of a, a mackerel in one shift only without needing to, to dick about too much. But I'm not quite back at that level yet. Can we shift this much mass? No, there's too much stuff bolted to it. Mm, I could deconstruct this a bit further, but I'm just gonna just gonna throw it all in the bin. So if you want to, you don't have to come back to the same ship. You can say, oh, I'm done with this and just go. Um, in the edition before, edition is the wrong word. In the, the update before last, the devs were frustrated by the tendency that players had to pick the most valuable uh, class of ship they had access to. Oh, that's going to catch. Uh, are we all right? I think we're all right. Pick the most valuable ship they had access to. Uh, cut as much of a hole as they could to get the engine out, yank out the engine, a couple of other high value components, and then not bother uh, deconstructing it any further or, or collecting any other components. Uh, in order to solve that problem, they added first a system where you uh, gain increasing, like exponentially increasing amounts of upgrade materials based on 
uh, the percentage of the ship you salvage. That's the yellow bar at the top of the screen. So the amount of upgrade points you get at level 1 is way, way, way less than you get at level 5. Level 5 is like 2,000, 3,000 or something. And 1 is like 200. Uh, can I yank? Yeah, I, I can yank this now. This is fine. Whoa. Oh, boy. Well, it's valuable, but it's not quite broken, so that's good for me. This is the least efficient way to do this. Is it going in the barge? Or there we go. Okay. So, yeah. So that was the first way they tried to solve that problem, and um, well, actually, you know, the way they tried to solve that problem originally is that you would have a um, you would have a work order for each ship. So a ship would arrive, and it would be like, you know, we've got. Uh, we need you to salvage 15 computers and 35 chairs out of this in addition to all of the rest of the stuff you salvage. And you would get a bonus for that. But people didn't bother because it wasn't as good as just ripping the engine out and moving on. Um, and I think I talked about this ages ago, but game devs have this irritating position where if people aren't playing the, ga in the, ga the game in the way that they intended, they consider that to be a mistake rather than a sign that their design... That, you know, that they've designed something other than what they thought they were designing. So I really think, generally speaking, game devs should lean into that kind of thing rather than attempt to dissuade players from doing whatever the fuck it was they were doing that you don't want them doing. Um, but they did not make that decision and instead decided to to change that system completely. So now instead of a, a detailed work order with, you know... 12 different kinds of component that you need to salvage in different amounts, which I really liked. I liked having a little laundry list of things. Because then, you know, once you've salvaged 35 chairs, you're able to go, well, the other 15 chairs aren't worth me salvaging. I'm only getting a bonus because they wanted chairs specifically. And I like being able to make that call. I like being able to make that decision. But, um, yeah, so the way it works now is there's just a blanket value of ship components. And you you work your way up it until you hit five, and then after five you don't bother salvaging anything else, even if there's even if there's lots of juicy valuable components left. Because why would you? Except I do because I'm an obsessive completionist. Exactly the same impulse that makes me pick up every single item when I play an RPG is present in this game too, and it requires me to actually finish the job I'm doing, even if it's inefficient or going to ultimately cost me money. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's the same impulse, I think. There's this idea that it's a problem that needs to be fixed rather than an opportunity that is being presented to you. Which is kind of hilarious when you consider how much, you know, like, corporate writer types are likely to be like, ah, you just gotta, gotta pay attention to your opportunity, you know? That's what it's all about. That's, that's gonna take forever. Uh, should I cut this in half again? Probably. On the other hand, it is moving, so maybe not. Let's just try and keep it on course and not let it drift into the wrong furnace. Oh, that was a loose rectangle. Where did it go? I need my rectangle. Precious rectangle, where have you gone? Rectangles are the most valuable shape. Oh, there it is. Aha! Delicious rectangle in the bin with you. Uh, the shift timer is at the top of the screen, centre top, above the uh, salvage bar. So we have 5 minutes and 34 seconds left. In this game mode, every shift is 15 minutes. Which is kind of funny, there's um, there's a law reason for why it's 15 minutes. Which is that uh, like the radiation that your grappling beam emits isn't safe for more than 15 minutes. But... That does mean that this, you know, this horrible corporate cyber future where it's like, oh, oh, they work us to the bone. It's so, it's so exhausting. You know, it's terrible. It's, it's hell. It's the worst, worst job imaginable, but it's better than starving. And it's the only option we have to sit here in orbit, chopping, chopping ships into pieces. They're only doing 15 minutes of work a day. They're not, they're, they're not legally allowed to do more than 15 minutes of work a day. And even I, an inveterate time waster, think that 15 minutes of work a day is pretty reasonable, all things considered. Even if you are in space. You know, 
for a game that's supposed to be about how the corporations are evil and terrible and taking advantage of the poor beleaguered proletariat and don't don't get me wrong i am incredibly in favor of workers rights i am only not a communist because i am too tired and sick generally speaking to be able to read theory and i know people will make fun of me if i can't read theory but i generally speaking have extremely socialist opinions but like Come on, it's 15 minutes a day. I, I, I work 15 minutes a day and I'm disabled. I think there's an implication that if the company could work you more, it would. And the only reason why you're not working more than 15 minutes a day is because workers just died en masse from the radiation. Is that? Oh god, I've only got five demo charges per thingamajig. That's extremely frustrating. So these outer rings of these um, these gantry sections are uh, made of a material that needs to go in the blue furnace, not the red furnace. But the inner section needs to go in the red furnace, so I need to cut them loose. But the 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 bolts on them can only be cut with demolition charges, and I can only carry five of those at the time at the moment. So. There's a real, uh, there's a real efficiency increase as you can afford better equipment and so on. The ship models are really nice. Um, they're very modular as well, so various different javelins look quite different to one another. Um, different geckos look quite similar but have very different interior layouts. There's a really nice kind of... Uh, the procedural generation system that they've developed for it is, is delightful and I love it very much. I could... Um, Happily chop ships into bits all day, and on the rare occasions when there's a new ship type, or a new ship, um, you know, archetype, I guess. Because, you know, these are all javelins, but there's like six or seven different physical archetypes, and then slight variations within those physical archetypes as well. Alright, that's one outer ring. Let's get that yanked off. No snide comments about yanking off my outer ring, because, frankly, I don't even know what that would mean. It does sound kind of rude, though. I need to get some kind of VTuber rig set up with my avatar, so that people will be incredibly lewd about me. But that's neither here nor there right now. It's actually kind of funny. I, I, I settled on this whole, like, rebranding with my new avatar and stuff you know, last year, um, before I'd actually ever heard of what a VTuber was, and I had no idea it was a thing. Which is hilarious to me, because I think it's pretty good design for a VTuber character, and then I just have had no idea that that was, that was a thing that people were doing. But I absolutely don't have the time or money to get a VTuber set up going, and, uh, Maybe I'll do face cam eventually, who knows. If I ever recover well enough to feel like I don't look like, you know, um, a sad hemp sack full of porridge, which is what I look like right now. Sorry to dispel the illusion that I'm a cute robot. Anyway, this one is nearly done. Yeah, I didn't mean to be a downer, I'm just, um, am sometimes. It's really irritating the angle this thing's flopped to. Oh, I forgot to get bombs again. You know when you go to the shop and you're like, hey, does anyone need anything? And they're like, nah, we're fine. And then you get back and they're like, oh, did you pick up the bombs? And you're like, bombs? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, you said, you said, did I want anything? And I wanted bombs. You didn't say that before I left. No, I, I texted you while you were there. And then you just have to sadly admit that you don't have bombs. And then you'll offer to go out and pick up the bombs, and they're like, well, you know, you, I don't want to make you go out again. You know, you've been out once already. I just, I really wanted those bombs. Don't ask me why. I actually need to refer- uh, I'm going to take a two minute break real quick because my delightful, warm, floofy dressing gown is now currently causing me to melt. My processes are overheating and I need to deal with that problem.
When afflicted with the common cold, it is generally advisable to wrap up warm. However, doing so, I I, I don't know why. I've always I've always noticed that I I get really really cold, then I wrap up warm, and then I and I overheat, massively overheat. I I never manage to find some kind of pleasant equilibrium when I have a cold. Upgrade, upgrade. Why don't we up my grade? Do I even have enough? I have 2,000. That's good. That's probably plenty. What I really want is grapple strength. Yes, that's the good shit. Oh, tether, tether lifetime's tempting as well. Hmm. As is charged push force. Hmm. Oh, oh, that one's only 700. That's range. I don't care about range. Let's just grab this for now. I always forget this, but this is actually only for physical impacts. So upgrading your suit integrity won't help you if you get electrocuted, which is usually how I die. Right, let's get back into our third shift. You may have noticed that we only made about two and a half million on this shift, as opposed to the seven or so we made on the previous shift. Was it seven? Five? I don't remember. There's only 12 million of value in the ship as a whole, so anyway. The main reason I'm going to keep going back to the same ships to finish them up is because I want to hit level 5 on the um, processing tracker up at the top, the salvage tracker. I'm pretty sure the bonus for hitting level 5 on a specific ship is like the, like as much as all of the rest put together. But this should be our last session on this one and we might even finish early. Why is this, mo why is this moving? What the fuck happened here? This might be a physics bug. You sometimes get a physics bug where two, two, two objects that look like they're still are pushing into one another, so that they cause cause net movement in one direction or another. Not sure why that's happening, but I hope it won't cut into my bottom line, or indeed my bottom. Which may happen if I'm not careful and it swings around at a weird angle. Ah, oh, beans. Oh shit. Oops. <laughs> Whoops. That's 150,000 credits down the drain. Oh well. Let's let's pretend no let's pretend no one saw that. Fortunately, I'm technically a self-employed contractor rather than an employee of the company, which means I have zero oversight. Which means I can freely cut the airlocks in half if I want to, and I'm the only one it hurts. And indeed, I'm the only one who notices. How oh, does that not detach? Most of these most of these ring panels have a detachable section over the over the airlocks. This I think is the only one that doesn't. See, that one's detachable. Although it won't come away now because of the bits of airlock from my horrible, terrible, no good mistake. I'm just Oh, is there an outlook panel inside it? Aha! That's at least something to salvage. Airlock panels are worth a lot more than door panels, so... That's a waste of a tether. I'm not going to waste a tether on that. That just goes in the bin. So long. Godspeed and good luck. Truly you were the greatest of airlocks. Torn and timely from the grasp of life. Destroyed unnecessarily by the callous, cash obsessed whims of yet another profiteering deconstructor. I was. Ah ha! Ah ha ha ha! That's why this got stuck. I always forget that there's a little sticky outy bit of, uh, bit of ladder there. That's what really gets in the way. And that was a miss in the bin you go. Nice to see that my grapple charged push is enough to finally move these giant hull sections. But yeah, I think one of the major changes that bothers me is that uh, you basically... You, ha you have access to the cutting explosives, which are a really cool tool and really fun. 
because you play the whole game and you get used to not being able to cut these gigantic hull sections. So I thought when they added when they added the cutting explosives, it would be like, oh great, okay, so you know, for the more detailed cutting, you use the pre-designed cut points, um, and then and it separates into pieces. But for the gigantic, enormous hull sections, you'll be able to, you know, do your own thing. Uh, the only thing preventing me from dropping ships on the earth is the profit motive. Because if I sink this entire thing into that barge, A, the barge will catch it, and B, I won't get any money. <laughs> well, I'll get money for all of the barge salvageable components, which are things like usable electronics and chairs and things. Uh, the, bar the barge is for components that are functional and can be stripped out and put into another ship. You know, refurbished components. And then the furnaces are for... Um, structural components that are melt going to be melted down and put into a diff uh, different shape. However, if you just like yeet shit over there, it does disappear and then you're penalised for wasting it. Which is also fairly realistic. I wish you could selectively break tethers. You can tap Y to cancel all of your currently active tethers, but there doesn't seem to be a way to cancel one specific tether that happens to be in the way, or anything like that. Oh, I have my bombs. Which means I can bomb things. Oh no, I don't. I have zero bombs. Yeah, see, this, this jack is in the way at the front here. The barge is in the way at the bottom. The structure of the station is away ahead of you, and up, who cares? It's space. But also, like, I'm pretty sure the corporation lives in space. I think, like, I think they care more about things like that shipyard over there and that, which is the FTL blaster thingy. What do I need? Bombs. What do I need? Fuel. What do I need? Also air. I love to engage with the company's store. Scrip truly is the funnest currency. Oh, uh, yeah, so I was saying, like, I think it would be really fun if you were actually incentivized to cut hull sections into pieces the way you wanted to. Um, I'm not really sure why they don't allow you to. That's more, Im that's more momentum than I'm comfortable imparting to this thing right now. Um, but yeah, so... The way it used to work was that you actually had to sometimes do that on geckos. And that was always the funnest thing for me, figuring out where I was going to make my cuts. You know, I, I got to decide. I think it works better to put it here. I think it makes more sense. I think you get more efficient cutting to split it down this axis. But um, the way they've updated the hulls now, there's basically never a reason to actually use the cutting explosives to design your own cuts. The only thing you ever need to use them for is to break level 2... Um, cutting points and if that's the case why bother <laughs> why, why bother having two cutters you know it doesn't there's no creativity to it oh i didn't get bombs i thought i got bombs i think this part of the job is the bomb and other corporate cliches Tune, on, tune in now to Space 101.5, where we've got all corporate cliches, all the time. Is that enough to detach that yet, or is it still stuck? Aha, there's one left. This is like the awkwardest possible angle for this. You can actually use the, uh, the inertia from the cutting explosives to your advantage sometimes. But I have not done that today. I have not exactly covered myself in glory. I've covered myself entirely with something else. Something less palatable. Alright, if I put those on there, that should rotate the whole thing around into a more convenient direction and then also fly off in the right direction. Which means if I snip this off, I can send this whole section into the furnace and then there's just a tiny bit of stuff left to salvage, and then we can move on to a different ship type. Can I hit all four of these at once? Ooh, that's nice. That's efficient.
Oh, I missed one. Oh well. It always feels very satisfying to get away with that. Oh, am I stuck? No, we're all right. We're fine. Zappy, zappy. Zappy, zappy, make me happy. Cut things in space with a whack of zashi. And other bits of posy. My uh, first collected book of poems is available now on, on Space Etsy, or Spetsy. For only 19.99 Internet Space Corporate Books. Get yours now and maybe I can get out of my indentured servitude. I'm just kidding, of course. No one ever gets out of indentured servitude. This lot should be enough to tick me over my limitation. Well, it probably doesn't return anything on AO3 because it literally just doesn't have any characters. I mean, it has a handful of extremely boring broad strokes characters in this new narrative that I was complaining about them having added earlier. Um, but I don't think anyone who plays it cares about the narrative. I would be astonished if anyone cared about the narrative or the characters. It's just... It's just zen. It's just fun. Someone called it Work Simulator once, but like, honestly, there's been a huge boom in Work Simulator type games in the past few years. I think people just like... This is just a fundamental fact that humans like to complete tasks and feel productive. Um, especially when you can zone out into a zen-like state while doing them, and this kind of game is very good for that sort of thing. Oh, Shipbreak is a pretty good pun. I'll, I'll give you that much. Actually, I am kind of surprised that no one's written, like, weirdly psychosexual shipbreaker, uh, you know, internet pornography. Because- oh, ah, I nearly missed that. Yoink. Because, I mean, let's be real, there's a lot- there's a lot to work with there. There's something very intimate about crawling inside one of these things and figuring out it, inside its most intimate places where you're going to apply pressure and heat and slowly deconstruct it until it opens like a flower. You know? And, you know, there's something- like, there's a huge overlap between sex and death. And that's- oh, I've sent that to the wrong one. Let's try not to waste a huge amount of money. But there is- there is huge overlap between sex and death, and there is a whole lot of, like, internet queer literature of the last few years that's been written with... fascinating, weird... um... psychosexual imagery. You know, people write about the eroticism of being deconstructed by serial killers. What about the eroticism of slowly deconstructing the sterile hull of a decommissioned spaceship? Yeah, that's not- that's not impossible. Let's be real. Why isn't this moving further forwards? Into the bin with you. Go. Be gone. I've got two minutes left on this work shift and I want to knock off early. I can have- I can have an extra smoke break if I finish now. I mean, you could- you could probably write a bit about the rush trying to finish early as well if you wanted to. That reminds me, I should, um... I should one day finish that Porpentine parody I started writing, Psychosexual Zine Office. Which unfortunately is way funnier in concept than in execution. For all that there is a funny execution in it. I think I missed something important, but I'm not sure what it was. Oh shit, there it is! This is why it's important to use your scanner more than zero times while deconstructing a ship. You might miss about 120,000 credits worth of, um, of external cradle structure. I'm actually, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just gonna leave. I don't want to, I don't want to suffocate again. So let's just nip in here and be done with. So 
So very slim profits on this one. I'm willing to take the uh, decreasing profits of the further you push into deconstructing a ship, because as you can see, the amount of um, upgrade coins you get is hugely increased. There's no actual benefit to completing your, your debt and paying it all off, which means the amount of money you generate is actually completely unnecessary. Um, it's literally just a scoring mechanic. It has no, it has no mechanical benefit. What you really care about are your links tokens, which will let you upgrade your material and your mastery rating, which will let you get better ships. So that's, that's the incentive that already existed within the game for you to, to deconstruct as much as possible. But, um, they felt the need to change it anyway. 120, 240, 480, 1200, 3000. So it's not like exponential, but it is a significant increase as you go. So that, uh, deconstruction has earned us uh, 4,200, 4,680, 4, 9, yeah, about 5,000 tokens overall, which doesn't look, oh, no, but I already spent these ones, that's why there's less. I have successfully done mathematics, which never happens. Like, I had a whole bimbo phase in 2019, and, um, well, I've grown out of it now. I still, still cannot do math mathematics, no matter how hard I try. Oh, fantastic. One of the mandatory narrative sections where I have to listen to people talk about things I don't care about. Lovely. 52? It's Hal. Let's talk. You know, in a lot of ways, you and I are the same. Came from Earth. Hard work. I can smell a really concerning electronic burning smell right now, so I'm just going to mute my and try and figure out what's going on with that while you guys listen to this dipshit. Good morning, Shipbreaker. Lynx mandates a maximum of eight hours of sleep. Any extra sleep time will be docked from the next pay cycle. Well, I swear to God, I can smell burning hair or possibly burning electronics, but I can't find any source and my computer temperature is running at like 75 degrees, so that's fine. Maybe it's my neighbors. They We have a fireplace in our living room, which means we get to smell the terrible smells of... Uh, no, I don't think it's COVID because like I couldn't smell it in the other room. I went to the other room specifically and I couldn't smell this. It is quite unpleasant. But it's far from the only bad smell that's come echoing up through that chimney from downstairs. I guess, I mean, it could... Uh, maybe it smells a little bit like something cooking. Hmm. Highly peculiar. Or maybe I'm having a stroke, who knows. But I can definitely not smell it in the other rooms, so... That's weird. What a, what a weird thing to happen. What an odd aside we've discovered today. 
Mm, that wasn't quite the one I wanted, but that's fine. Let's grab this one as well. And then back to that daily grind. Actually, I am going to check again real quick just to make sure that I'm not able to smell it elsewhere. Alright, I am going to just formally claim that it is some terrible smell from downstairs and nothing to do with my computer burning itself to death. Let's have a look at spaceships. So, the game never stops giving you uh, mackerels as an option. No matter how far you go. Oh, oh, a gecko. Alright, looks like we've unlocked our first gecko. We only have access to the station hoppers at first, which is a shame because it's the most boring kind of gecko to deconstruct. But um, let's have a look at one anyway. Because these are the real big ones. These are the. Whoops, let's grab some tethers. Let's not zoom away first. Welcome to Vendatron 9000. Thank you for your tethers restored. Now, the Gecko is a real interesting ship. It uh, was originally designed for heavy cargo hauling, but it's uh, it's been a real workhorse of the industry. You can find them used for all sorts of things nowadays. This one's a passenger ship. You can also get uh, various different science arrays. All sorts of industrial applications. Just really very modular, very usable for everything. It is the most, as the internet people say about spaceships, submissive and breedable. Oh, that felt weird. I didn't like saying that. So the uh, passenger, passenger versions are the first ones you gain access to and Broadly the least interesting. Um, it's kind of just a big shell with a bunch of chairs in it. But it is what we have access to right now. Oh, I forgot to what men mention what these are. The game's had little bits of random debris floating around just for atmospheric, you know, visual texture uh, since the earliest versions of the game. But they have now added a use for them. You can grab these as you go through and collect them up and then use them to repair a very small ship of your own. Actually, these, uh, this particular ship company, because all of the different ships are from different companies, um, so the layout of a heavy cargo gecko from Lynx Industries looks different to one from, you know, like, one of the other made-up corporations that I can't remember the name of. But, yeah... These ones have the largest interior space. They follow the same- all of the ships in the game follow the same kind of um, design parameter, which is that you have a uh, an external hard shell and an internal softer shell, and the gap between those two skins is is where you need to get as a as a ship breaker to, to break things apart and figure out how to repair stuff. So all of the like engineering functions and so on are, are hidden between the two hulls. Which is why we're between the two hulls right now. Which is pretty sensible as design parameters go. Multiple hulls is always a good idea if you don't want people to die horribly. Um, let me just check something real quick. No, we should be fine. Uh, right, so, 
Where was I? Somewhere around here. Oh, hey, there's a random crate. That shouldn't be here. That's a really weird place for a crate to be. So yeah, the uh, the other specializations of geckos will have different interior shapes, which I think is a really nice detail. This one is the most awkward to move around for that uh, simple reason that it is full of <laughs> full of a giant box full of chairs and um, yeah, but the uh, the cargo one just has an enormous interior space between the two holes for cargo and is therefore the easiest to get around. Where the hell did I? How did I get in here? Where's the airlock? I don't want to suffocate. <laughs> but if I have to cut a hole in the hull to get out, it'll explosively decompress, which is bad for me, personally. Those are fuses, by the way. If you don't time it right, they electrocute you. Fortunately, I'm extremely good at this, and I can 420 no-scope my way through some fuses real quick. Did you have something to say, known blob, by the way? Because there's like a minute lag between streaming and see like me saying stuff and you guys hearing it and responding is like i think it's like a minute's lag by default on twitch that's the minimum and i of course aha here it is have that problem where as soon as i've said something i forget i said it just instantaneously absolute goldfish memory oh okay i'm gonna have to explosively decompress this on purpose because that is the atmosphere gen uh, regulator and that is what i would use to vent the atmosphere safely, but since I can't vent it safely, I'll vent it very dangerously. Oh, oh shit, that's bad. Oh fuck. Oh shit, okay, right. Oh god. Oh man, this is... Oh, right, I should not be in here. Beans. So I'm not entirely sure why this happened. Well, I mean, I know exactly why this happened, but I'm not sure. Not sure of the exact details. Uh, what happened was that some piece of debris, when I vented this, um, slammed through. Oh, hey, money! I love money. Slammed through the coolant pipe to the reactor, which caused a rapid meltdown. Uh, it must have struck the reactor itself because the reactor melted down way faster than is normal. Question is, what did that? There shouldn't have been anything loose floating around. So, yeah, that's by far the most valuable component on the ship. Uh, a reactor of a ship this size is worth something like 5 million by itself. So, you know, that's... A problem. As you can see, it's now impossible for us to get level 4 or level 5 on this particular ship. <coughs> Excuse me. May as well salvage what I can, but I won't take a second shift on this ship. This is someone else's problem now. Um, send it to someone whose time is less valuable. What I was going to say was that for all of that talk about the erotic potential of deconstructing a ship, um, you know, crawling around between the hulls is definitely a component with regards to that. Making it explode so hard it dies, maybe, may also be a component, who knows. Anyway, this is frustrating because I, I like to get the reactors out in one piece. Um, one thing I don't know is how intense this... <laughs> That's funny. Normally when uh, a switch is detached, you can't activate it anymore, but clearly this one broke in such a way that it was still actable. I can still flush the fuel from the tanks that weren't there. Anyhow. Oh, it looks like this nacelle survived, maybe? Yeah, fantastic. Is that completely broken free? No, it's still bolted on in a couple of places. Um, so... 
so. Oh god, I hope you didn't hear that actually. I tried to be very quiet. <laughs> What the fuck was I talking about? I don't even remember. Um, I I I had a I have a really good success rate success rate for for cleaning up geckos without making them explode, but the real difficulty here is with. Oh good, you didn't you didn't hear it then, unless that's a unless that's a politeness, but um. The real difficulty is with the atmospheric decompressions. Every other hazard is pretty easy to deal with. What I don't know with the atmospheric decompression is does it factor in the amount of air that's moving? Is there actually a physical simulation going on that dictates how much stuff happens? Because if that's the case, then deconstructing, uh, decompressing section by section makes a lot more sense because it's a lot safer. But if that's not the case, then it's safer to decompress it all at once because if the de for decompression force is the same regardless, then um, decompressing all at once means that you only have one opportunity for things to break. But I do think it's frustrating. Having to deal with atmospheric hazards is like one of the higher pay grade things, which makes sense, and I'm fine with dealing with atmospheric hazards. But it is a huge pain in the ass when there is no way to deal with it safely. It is basically random, as far as I can tell, whether you will, um... Have, have this happen and lose a reactor and a, and a huge amount of profit potential. Oh, I wonder if there's any more money lying around. Since I'm obviously not going to have any... Oh, shit. <laughs> this is how we got into that mess. Ow. You see, that was that was one single room's worth of, e of atmosphere. And that was enough to cause the entire bulkhead to break apart. Whereas previously, I've never had that happen. Um, maybe... Well, actually, this is the first time I've reached this size of ship on this playthrough. Maybe they've just made the atmospheric hazards more hazardous. The deal with the ship you can build is that um, in your habitat, there's a little computer console you can use, and... is that Did that even break open? There is a little uh, computer console that you can build, and with the grabbed bits that you you can grab floating around freely in these spaces, you can also salvage them out of components that aren't broken, but that's dangerous as you can see. And it also costs you money because you're salvaging from a, a, a non-damaged component. And then when you have enough of certain bits, you can plug them into the ship. Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be any kind of physical simulation. I thought it would be quite nice if you could... Um, I assumed that you would be floating around in 3D like this, plugging things into a ship to repair it, rather than um, cutting things out to to make money. But that is not the case. You know, what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna call it a day. <laughs> this has not been my proudest work day, so let's just ollie outie. Oof. Well, I still made enough profit to cover my costs at least. Somewhere on here it should list how much it costs me. Um, but I don't see it. So my throat's starting to get a bit sore again, so I think I will um I'll show you the the ship you can make and then that'll be it for today. The only piece permitted in the salvage yard are profit, processor, and potassium trifluoromethane sulfonate. Oh I love potassium trimethane sulfurinate. It's, it's tasty. So, this is the thing, and it's just... It's just a automatic thing. You just fill out the list on the list. You don't get to actually... You don't get to actually install any bits manually yourself, which is a huge shame. I don't know what happens when you finish making it. We'll find out eventually, I'm sure. The end goal of making this is that you have it. I think it's probably just going to be a narrative thing that you can use that to escape in some way, maybe. Because you can supposedly upgrade it for gate travel, even though it's the size of, like, a Voxel Astra. Um, I need more wire. 
But I suspect that um, it's the the game's narrative will supposedly end with you finishing that ship and escaping to, I don't know, the colonies in it. I don't imagine that it'll be something you can actually use in your job day to day. Anyway, um, as my throat slowly closes up, that's going to be all from me for today. Thank you so much for watching. Um, it's uh, it's cool of you. It's cool of you to watch. I hope you I hope you had fun. I had fun, even though I did make a terrible mistake and explode a very valuable reactor. But you know, oopsie whoopsie. No, Pobody's nerf effect. We all make mistakes. Um, Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you later. If you haven't already, don't forget to check out my YouTube channel, etc. I'm not going to bother going in detail on my end spiel when there's only five viewers, but that's all from me for today. Thank you so much.